Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Resident Evil 2 Remake playthrough, part 2 of the Leon campaign. Man, I have two upgrades for my Matilda already. <laughs> wow. Okay. The thing about... Now, I, I, don't, I don't recall the Matilda, uh, was it the same as... RE2 where it had burst action after yeah yeah things? you can get the stock the the Matilda is is based off and in the original game named after the H&K VP70 specifically the VP70M which is the military model the civilian model did not have that burst capability which makes me wonder why Leon has one because the military model was only ever produced in a limited run a limited run for a military contract that fell through <laughs> so in, in uh, real I, I life or in as, the I, game it's it's one of those guns so like there's a few thousand models out in the world you know so i always took it as it being a reference to leon the professional hmm uh, because the girl's, um, was it Natalie Portman, I think? That was actually her first movie, I think. Uh, yeah. Her name was Matilda. It might be, because professional mode in RE4 is a reference to that as well. So, uh, yeah. But the, uh, oh, you mean the name Matilda? No, well, I the name was talking about the Rodal book. Well, well, the name is probably a reference to that, but that that name originates in Resident, Resident Evil 4 and I'm not even sure it was used for this particular gun uh, I'm not sure but the the H and K is a completely different thing it's a uh, I think it's a German gun I'm not sure but it's it's a it's a rare rare gun and Leon just has one and finds the stock equally rare just lying around the police station like why is this here why do you have this I if you know anything about guns then Leon having this thing is a joke <laughs> but it's a really cool handgun and it becomes pretty useful later on in the game if you attach the three round burst stock way more useful than it was in the original I'll say the interesting thing about the handgun upgrades in this game is that each character has a handgun upgrade that turns their handgun into a worse version of one of the exclusive guns the other character uses. <laughs> so Claire gets the high-powered ammo that turns her handgun into a magnum, and Leon gets his three-round burst thing that turns his handgun into a submachine gun, essentially. That's neat, I guess. Like, I guess that's a cool way to like make it so that you don't feel like you're missing out on the other campaign. Well, it balances things out a little, but the Magnum Leon gets is still way better than the Magnum ammo that you can use as Claire, and you get more bullets for it, and you can craft more bullets for it. The um, the submachine gun is way more destructive than a three-round burst from a handgun will be. But, you know... At the same time, when you upgrade the Matilda to full... To, 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 to full uh, to its full capabilities and just pour three round bursts into a big big ass boss monster it can do some really good spam damage um so i have a question uh in resident evil lore does anybody ever get infected just from getting like like do any of the main characters get just infected from a bite just from like being bitten or attacked or whatever no i don't think so I mean that 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 is a mechanic in Resident Evil Outbreak, but the canonicity of that is dubious at best. Some of the side stories are what if scenarios that straight up can't happen. So even though Resident Evil Seven references one of the characters, you can't really say that the whole game is canon. The closest thing I can think of is the plot point in Resident Evil Three where you have to yeah, but that's from that's uh, Nemesis. Synthesize the cure. That's Nemesis. So yeah, that's not, that's not an infection. Still, it's an though. infection, but it's a specific yeah. infection and and Ted was talking about from like regular zombie bites um, yeah the book's explanation for why that never happens apart from the the author being smart enough to never write any of the characters getting bitten is that the virus has wound down with time and isn't as volatile as it should be which makes sense because in both cases the in the outbreak had been going on for quite a while before the characters that, got into I it. mean, you know what? That actually makes somewhat amount of sense, like medically, because many diseases are most transmittable before you even show symptoms. Um, I can't think mm. of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure that's the case. Well, in the book, it was 
In the book, it was more of an explanation for why the general spill didn't affect any, di didn't like catch on as an airborne disease when the when when the um, when the character showed up at the mansion because it was heavily implied in the files that the T virus was an airborne spill, and they went with that in the live action Resident Evil movie. God damn it, <laughs> uh, for better or worse. Ugh, past me, why did you stop right in front of a corpse within grabbing distance? Are you stupid or something? I mean, I know that corpse won't come back to life, but I probably didn't while I was playing. Maybe. <laughs> well, I guess RPD stands for really pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, Leon's the I'm only one I'm going to be milking this that. RPD train for as long as I can think of names. <laughs> so, so, Leon's the only one who wears that outfit then, right? To my knowledge, yes, because, you know, we see other police officers, and they're all wearing what looks to be standard police uniforms. Leon is the only one that gets this. Yeah, in the, in the original game, it was kind of weird. Uh, Leon just shows up in town in full anime cosplay, and and he has that from the start. In this game, they went to the trouble of modeling an entirely different costume just so that he could be dressed up in civvies uh, during the opening uh, section, and then he dresses up in riot gear when he gets to I, the station. I I guess in the original he was really proactive, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never get an idea of like where he was supposed to be stationed. Yeah, we if never. If he's did. a rookie cop, he was, was probably going to be a meter maid, all things considered. <laughs> oh my god! The costumes in the original Resident Evil Two were both so dumb that the writer had to write explanations for why the characters were dressed as they were. In Leon's case, he was just running so late that he changed into his uniform at, at, at a public restroom on the way. <laughs> and was like his origins. His origins as a cop is something he doesn't want to go into. Like twenty years later, it, by a campfire, they'll ask, "Hey, what was your first days as like as a cop, Leon?" And then it just flashbacks to him signing a parking ticket. It's like, <laughs> uh, I'd rather not talk about that. What, what, what got you into the, What got you into the force, Leon? I got all C's in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you want to have an easy time during the first half of the B scenario, this is the thing that you need to remember. Put off going to the star's office for as long as humanly possible, because that's what triggers Mr. X. So uh, if it looks like I'm avoiding the star's office, I probably am. <laughs> Do you have well, to go there to continue plot? Yeah, you have yeah, cause to. Yeah, because one of the medals is there. Yeah. That and, you know, you also kind of want to get the Magnum. I like to think this game is smarter than that, though. And if you were to just stand still for, like, hours on end without doing anything because you know certain items will trigger Mr. X, he would just find you eventually yeah. anyway. Also, you're not quite correct. The medal isn't in the um, star's office. It wasn't the original, the unicorn medallion. But oh, um, right. I think you might find one of the documents that tells you a combination uh, in there but i'm not getting, sure getting back to an aside but there has to be something there has to be something important in the office because if if there's a uh, document just telling you about the medallion but you don't need to know like combinations for all you that can just never to get trigger the medallion, mr. X. you can easily trigger not trigger mr x although that so it has to be something important that is an interesting idea john that he kind of brought up like it'd be interesting that if the longer you take this you know the more likely he is to just show up out of nowhere Apparently, something yeah. like that happens in one of the new Deus Ex games, where, like, the game starts and there's like, oh, these people are in a burning building, we have to help them, but you know it's a video game, and so you'll just dick around because you, you know... You can take a... all the time I want. Yeah, but apparently if you, like, dick around for too long, like, they actually die, or something like that, so... <laughs> <laughs> cloud, you know cloud, the black that, cloud, the black meteor is going to fall any time. Well, we can do all the side quests we want, Tifa. You know what game does that actually? Uh, I think I want to say it was Deja Vu, the eight bit game from the the same guys that made Shadowgate and all that. Uh, that game starts with you inside a car wreck and it starts catching fire. If you take too long to do anything, you just get emulated. Like you just catch on fire and that's it game over so you can't examine everything for everything and make sure that you have all the items you just have to think of a solution to get out fast basically is it cryptic and dumb because these are the people who made shadowgate i want to say so it can't yes. be any worse than the opening to overblood uh i don't know what that is it's this really really terrible old ps1 resident evil 1 game that i actually remember 
from my own childhood, but gaming br brought it back by doing a video on it. In the first room, <laughs> you're in a cryogenic freezer, and the cold will... Oh, shit, I forgot this liquor was here. And the cold will eventually kill you. In fact, it'll drain your health pretty fast. And, and it, it, it'll kill you unless you figure out the really cryptic-ass controls that the game uses. You have to... You can't just examine things in Overblood. If there's something, like, down low on a control panel that you need to access, you need to duck. <laughs> and examine. Uh, so, yeah. The, the nice part of the liquor in this room is that all you need is what's in the uh, hand, for the most part. Yeah. Because cause that's just a document. You don't need to deal well, with that. Well, there's also the weapon and, and, key, but the moment you leave the the room, the liquor loses track of you, so you can just Yeah, and he, and he can't open doors, so... Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, Leon actually does get the crank that you used to open up those shutters, so we'll actually be seeing what's on the other side of there. Did the game have a timer in the A scenario? A timer? There was a timer in the uh, top right of the pause menu. That oh, just the how timer much just shows your game time, yeah. Yeah, but did you have that in the A scenario? Or yeah, was... yeah. Okay. All right. You also had it in the demo, which was extremely helpful because the demo won't let you play for half an hour. Okay, that's... Okay, because um, there are a lot of games where they'll add that kind of thing only during, like, a second playthrough or whatever, yeah. so I was just curious. The timer also doesn't run up when, you, when you're watching cutscenes, so... Oh, that's good. I like it when, when games do that. Like, they don't count the timer during the pause menu or, time, or um, cutscenes or, you know, anything like that. It only counts the time when you're actually playing. Yeah. So it's technically important. your world record speedrun could be three hours longer than the actual world record because you just sat on the pause screen for three hours, but it still it's, counts. Um, it's important in this game in particular because there are unlocks tied to getting better times, you know. So. Was it getting times and um, better ranks, which has always been the case? Yeah. Is rank in this it, game determined by just time? Just time? Okay. Uh, sort of. Anything through S is, I believe, just time. And if you want to get S plus, it's uh, time plus three or fewer saves. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't. Okay. I, I know. I know the. No, I know the number of saves was related to it too. I also remember, like, I thought like first eight sprays used this was well. Uh. Or that might be just the original game. I, I think, think it's just the original. Does the game care how many zombies you kill? No. No. Okay. No. If you want to go fast, you're not killing zombies anyway. So yeah, you kill no zombies, you get big boss ranks. <laughs> yeah, you get unlimited Chicago typewriter. Basic. I mean, Chicago typewriter is already unlimited. <laughs> yeah, but now you get an unlimited amount of Chicago typewriter. <laughs> so you get a gun that just shoots more guns at people. <laughs> so it shoots other Chicago <laughs> typewriters. Yes. Yeah, you, no, you, no, you, just, you just see you just see Snake like typing them to his hands and legs, and he becomes Bayonetta. <laughs> no, there was this one game. Uh, that if you were playing a pirated copy of it, would just shoot full-grown chickens <laughs> uh, as ammunition. Oh. So I'd like to think you just swap that with Tommy guns, <laughs> and you get. I, I mean, that. Let's be real. That's still pretty fucking painful. I, I, I think, think I remember it. seeing or hearing about that on a in like a Guru Larry video or something, where I he think, did a video on games that had weird things that would trigger if you pirated them. I think the best one that I've seen is Spyro 3's copy protection. Where at one point Zoe would say, it's, "It looks like you're using a pirated version of the game, Spyro." And then, like as you go, like things would just start to get progressively weirder and weirder. Like sometimes eggs that you need to get wouldn't be there, or sometimes like the game's frame rate would slow down, or sometimes it would just crash for no reason. And if you manage to stick it through and actually play through the game and beat it, the game doesn't show the final cutscene, but instead wipes your save file and sends you back to the first world. If, uh, I believe something like that, and it's just like uh, Earthbound did something like that too. <laughs> what did Earth really? Earthbound would wait until you get to the very end of the game, freeze before you fought the final boss, and wipe your save file. <laughs> okay, that's mean. <laughs> Probably uh, can't tell that you're using an emulator though. Uh, uh well, because emulation processes are much better now. They were like 20 years ago, so I would it's a, it's a safe assumption. Although we are getting to the point where, like, because your Super Metroid is a legitimate copy, but thought it was pirated, right? Right. So there. Well, that's because the save battery on my thing is dead. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know what it has tied to the game's programming or how it's uh, hardwired, but 
that has something to do with it, and I like to think the save battery being dead also activates the game's anti-piracing uh, anti-piracy features because the game just kills me as soon as I load the game up. Did you get a new cartridge or fix it or no? No, I haven't replaced it since. You know, because I have it on Virtual Console, and emulating is not very hard. SNES. You probably do want to deal with that battery though, because if it stays dead in there for too long, it might start leaking. Ooh, that would be bad. Yeah, like almost Radiation all of me. my Wiimotes ended up getting destroyed because I left batteries in there, and so they leaked terribly. And so now I'm paranoid about leaving batteries in anything for like more than a day. <laughs> so <laughs> I take them out as soon as I'm done with them because I also just don't want to pay another $40 for another Wiimote too. Although, in any case in any case the main draw to playing as the two different characters in Resident Evil 2 was the different weapon sh uh, lineups that they get and Leon's weapon lineup, well Claire's was a bit out of this world with the grenade launcher and the spark shot and all Leon's weapons are much more straightforward he gets a shotgun and a fucking flamethrower so, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Actually, the flamethrower is way more useful in this game than it is in the uh, than it is in the original, but we'll get to that when we get to it. For now, wow, they we actually have... made the flamethrower good. That's like <laughs> 80% of the time that's not true. So, mm. But for now, we have a shotgun. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Wasn't that like one of the lyrics in the original Japanese version of Resident Evil 1. Yeah, I got uh, a shot. The intro song in the Japanese version of the game, yeah. I got a no, shot. No, not the Japanese version, uh, but just like the original release. I got a shot shotgun. Gun. The shot? Chris Redfield. The shotgun's one of the best weapons in uh, RE4, too. So, it's one of the best know. weapons in any Resident Evil game, really. Yeah. Play at close range, aim for the head, and pop it. Yeah. It kind of sucked when in later entries they started adding a random chance to the critical shot, though. Meh. See, I'm, I'm still trying to put off going toward the star's office, even though I know that's where I need to go now. <laughs> Let's see if we can raid the... Mr. X is watching the closed circuit camera feed with his, like, his fingers collapsed together. It's like, why isn't he heading towards the star's office? Well, first I need to raid the Raccoon City Police Department's <laughs> vending machine. Okay, so when when Shadow Leggy did her, her like, review-ish thing, she, like, she commissioned someone to do a co-op animation for her that was just Mr. X chasing Claire to the item box. And because time would freeze when you select the item box... She, Mr. X would just have to stand there reading a newspaper while Claire used the item box. So Claire camped out inside the item box. <laughs> like, this is my home now? <laughs> Basically. Hey, man, that would be a very interesting gameplay mechanic. I know it would be co completely weird, given the... the hey, not context, only would you be but... completely safe, that that you could teleport between the dimensions. You could see it, that's what I was getting at. You can use it as a teleportation device. The item boxes would be your quick travel points. It's like, I yeah. need to... Yeah, exactly. I need to get to the lab real quick, and you just pop toss this. yourself into the box <laughs> just, and just pop on the other side. Just dive in, and then you just fly out on the other yeah. side. Capcom, hire us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, if they wanted to make a comedic Resident Evil spinoff, sure. Or a Dark Souls game. <laughs> Resident Dark. Evil's already comedic. It just pretends not to be. Oh, boy. The Star's USB drive. We'll never get this thing in on the first try. <laughs> it's one of those cases where the game really wants you to realize that you have to use the examine feature to get your items to work. Because, you know, it's a badge, and in badge form, it can open up the weapon case, but in, but you have to use the examine feature to, to, to pull, out, pull out the USB stick in order to use the computer in the star's office. So it's a, it's a key item with two forms that has a different use in each form. It's pretty nifty. Also, I just find it hilarious that star's members have USB sticks in their badges. Yeah, but some of these examination dual items get ridiculous. Like the valve handle, if you look at it in a certain way, also becomes a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> it's like a, I was like, I, I would never, never, never would have guessed. You look at the gun and it becomes a sword, and then you're like, wait, oh, wrong. <laughs> Although well, no, that's a gun blade. I, I love gun blades. Although the the valve handles and cranks always did do that thing, where um, it, you'd have to examine them to find out what shape they were. Which was more important in one, I think, than in, in any of the others. 
Leon, Leon, what are you doing? Yeah, you, Those are... the battery. This is this is what you need. Leon, that's not that's not a red herb. Those are Susan from Accounting's petunias. Leon, Leon, no, okay. Nope. <laughs> he actually really doesn't like Susan. I mean, to be oh fair, yeah, she and didn't in the invite B... him to the office party, so. And in the B scenario, you get um, a file from whoever the other character is. Like, in specific places where they'll, they'll give you a small update on what their progress is, and they'll leave you a little bit of ammo or something. That's pretty nice. I think the badge is... I think this is the only use of the badge? No, you... No, or? no, you can, uh, still no use you, the, you can still use it on the weapons case down in the underground. Okay, was that something that determined by the previous character? No, or no, just for no. both characters? Just both characters. Alright, I might be thinking of something. The, the only that. difference is that the B scenario character gets the bad, gets access to the badge earlier on. I think in um in the A scenario you actually had to wait until I believe you had to come back, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh But more importantly, hand cannon. <laughs> not yet. First we need to speed read this file. Who the hell is this a sounds like a total douchebag. I know, he sounds like a the totally not to desert eagle is <laughs> way way awesome. By the way, as soon as once, it, unlike uh, Claire's Magnum, you can upgrade this a couple times. One of them gives you a dot sight, which makes it a lot easier to score those critical headshots, and gives you a way to aim when your HUD is off. I suppose the uh, the other thing though is that this Magnum can actually be upgraded for more damage. Which just seems excessive uh, to me. <laughs> I hate the single box. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do I whip out the shotgun and just waste a bullet? <laughs> well, you know, what I could do is I could just stick the USB drive into the computer to get it out of my hair, but I'm going to leave those items in there. All right, here we go. Time to rip the bandage off. Yeah, there's Mr. X. No, Mr. Large Help. Friend Count. Help. Help. So, I notice he's wearing leather pants. Are they just too tight to allow him to run at you? No, I I, I, I love to imagine him, like, squeaking as he walks what? out in the hall. Wait, why is somebody's laundry there? <laughs> there's just a random laundry basket hanging around. It's like, um... There is a laundry room, so... Yeah, but this is a police station. <laughs> I mean, well, granted, know. this is that's probably like the the sixteenth least weird thing about the this police station. And you well, you know, it, it it's it's, it's not it's, it's not that out there to have a laundry in a police station because they have to have clothes for like people that are keeping in custody and all of that. So, not to mention they're much like fire departments. That too. There are probably times where officers have to you know stay overnight that, for whatever. That reason. too, definitely. Yeah, but why would you leave your laundry just in the middle of the hallway? That's well, it's it, the no murder. Of a zombie yeah. epidemic, dude. I, I, I really, it's like I want to help you with the zombies, all that, but I gotta fold my laundry first. Okay. Well, can, <laughs> can, can, can't, let, can't let my boxers get wrinkled. Considering that laundry was right by the stars office, I'm assuming it belongs to the stars. What? So Chris's. Chris just was no. in the middle of trying That's to get that, that no, barbecue belongs stain to Mr. out. And... It belongs to Mr. X, and he won't have anybody stealing his boxers. Oh God damn it! Having to do this puzzle with the goddamn with goddamn Mr. X chasing us. And I haven't moved the bookcase yet, so I have to actually go back the way I'm running. Stop running. You see, a lot of uh, a lot of little details in the game design make a whole lot more sense when Mr. X is chasing you. Because it's like, okay, the bookcase moved over, I can just move it up. I, I could just move it away. But no, now that you have to do this puzzle with Mr. X chasing you, it's a whole lot more of a headache to have that bookcase fall over and block the door, because you can't just run a circle around the police station, no. You have to go back the way you ran from Mr. X. I mean, I have to go to the item box anyway, so... Eh. And that only brought me up to Yellow Fine. Great. Okay, I thought you were going to combine them with the Red Arb that you already got. Yeah, because you have two of them. Alright. I can't seem to decide yeah, whether to I keep suppose my Mac eating a <laughs> eating a red and green herb combination does seem like a waste if you're eating it from caution. I, I've always had that problem with Resident Evil games. That's more of a personal thing, though. Does yeah. 
the, you don't increase your health with uh, yellow herbs in this one, right? No, there, no. there aren't the other, uh, there are no yellow herbs in this game. Okay. Yeah, no steroids either. More so the pity. <laughs> I miss steroids. <laughs> that was such well, a funny inclusion I mean, in seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense for them to exist in this universe, given Chris Redfield's, you know. So. Hey, hey, I'm pretty sure he's all natural. Um, <laughs> he, he, excuse he, he, he me. Just, he, he just ate a ton of beef and just added, it just went all right to his arms. Yeah. Chris Redfield is about as natural as a Victoria's Secret uh, catalog. Come on, give me a break. Yeah, I'm all. Wait, the catalog itself? I, or I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little perplexed. <laughs> I'm a little perplexed by just how buff they made him, because I I think his build is verging on act on actively being inconvenient. Yeah, he was, he was he was getting close to getting tension on shoulders. Like, there's a certain amount of musculature that when you build it up, you know, you can't yeah, be you effective much... athletically. You dehydrate too fast. You also yeah. have too much body to move in certain situations. Yeah, wasn't that basically Vegeta's whole thing about that Super Saiyan form in Dragon Ball Z? It's like, yeah, yeah uh, it's powerful, but it makes me slow. It sucks. Yeah, oh, Chris, God damn it! Can't be too big, otherwise you won't be able to shoot key blasts out of your hands. So wait, so does Vegeta never do what is it, Super Saiyan two or oh, three? Or... No, he gets no, he he gets the two. It, the the more the um really hulking up thing Trunks did, fighting Perfect Cell. Uh, yeah, Super Trunks and Super, super huge, Vegeta. But you can barely move. It's a Super Saiyan form that's so dumb they couldn't even give it a good Super Saiyan name. They just called it Super Trunks and Super Vegeta. It's like, are you trying to be confusing now? Well, I mean, there were like three Super Saiyan forms before Super Saiyan 2, so I think yes. Were there? Yeah, there was like a, a perfect Super Saiyan and enlightened... Uh, ascended Super Saiyan, full-powered Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan. Yeah, you know, it's almost like Dragon Ball is dumb, you know. Okay, I think, Mr. Yeah. I, I think I managed to give Mr. X the slip. The stars you through the is, wall. Oh yeah. <laughs> the stars office is one of the places where Mr. X won't follow you. It smells like uh, I guess Chris just left his bo uh, his can of body spray in there and he hates the smell of it. I'm not sure exactly what noises attract Mr. X, but as you can see, I'm trying not to attract him back into this room now that I know he's um, out of my way. So there's a video on this, actually. Uh, there are different levels of sound that attract Mr. X faster. The 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 most the highest priority is bullets. Uh, if you run around in a room f long enough, it takes Mr. X... Uh, again, it's all relative to how close he is already, but... It takes Mr. X about maybe five, ten minutes to find you. Bullets, 40 seconds. Oh. So he has a position on the map that you can't see whenever he's yeah. not near you. Yeah. He is, yeah, his movements are real time. Like, he doesn't warp. Okay. Well, it, but, uh, except he, for certain situations. Well, yeah, in certain scripted situations, sure. But in every other case, his movements are real time. And if uh, the fastest way to attract him is by shooting something. I, I think I'm hearing him, like, slamming through doors in another room, and I'm like, uh, please don't come this way. Did he work that Did he work that way in the original game, or... No. no. Okay. In the original, he was always scrapping. In the original game, he would only appear in certain places, yes. Okay. It was, it was a slightly different arrangement of places for Leon B. and Claire B. Like, there's, like, one of the characters gets this part, part where he vaults over the railing on the third floor, and the other character doesn't get that. Up by the clock tower, I mean. But, uh, apart from that... See, I don't have the combination, so I'm just brute forcing this. Brute force, brute force, brute by force. By testing all the combinations of the, the symbols that are smudged up. Well, thank God it's just these limited symbols and not numbers. Zero, zero, one. Eh. Okay. Zero, 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 two. Two. Eh. Eh. Honestly, if it's only a thousand combinations, it wouldn't take that long. You start doing that, and then miles and miles away, a young Lucas Baker is just twitching in his room in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I wonder if Lucas Baker is programmed to do anything if you try to brute force that lock. You'll have to try sometime. Uh, well, I would, but now that we have Resident Evil 2 Remake, I just can't stand to go back to Resident Evil 7. Okay, so that's actually a question I was thinking God about. damn it! Do you think we get a Resident Evil 8 anytime soon? Or do you think they'll try to do a 3 remake first? So, sometime within the next they'll few do, years, I'm, bet, I'm, I'm betting. They'll do an 8 first before they do a 3 remake, in my opinion. So Resident Evil has now become Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Although, to be fair, since they have all the Raccoon City stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if they made a Resident Evil 3 remake first, and they were saving, you know, Resident Evil 8 for, you know, PS5 Scarlet stuff. It's, it's possible, yes. Mm. Well, I mean, we were getting into that earlier in the commentary, how, how 3 Remake probably wouldn't be such an arduous project. Yeah, so... You because could, you, could, you have a lot of the assets already here. Yeah, so you could do that as your, you know, PS4, you know, maybe PS5 port job around like, next yeah, year. Your, your around next year. song for the current gen. And then Resident Evil 8 is your big, you know, next gen project. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not that big of a deal because apparently the next run of systems is going to be backwards compatible anyway, but... I mean, I'm sure, right. since this engine runs just fine on modern hardware, I'm sure that it wouldn't be that hard to get a version working for uh, the our current gen stuff right now. Well, it I also mean, has... that they would really have to do... It, I mean, from what I can tell, the new systems... I mean, I can't wait for this commentary to be outdated and wrong, uh, but <laughs> it seems like they're mo focusing more on, like, loading times and stuff like that than... Pure. Which, which I prefer at this point, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, the the other thing, though, is that it's not, um, it's not, the, it's not like this generation, yeah, this is the file that I missed, how about that? If I'd only gotten this file, I wouldn't have had to brute force that lock. Uh, but this generation of consoles isn't that different structurally from a PC, so. Well, that's why PS5 and assume it assumed Project Scarlet are going to be backwards compatible. Yeah. So it's a lot it's a lot less it's a lot less to ask for than to ask for the PS4 to be PS3 backwards compatible. Backwards compatible with solid state drive. Yeah. That'd be I'd like that. That'd be nice. Mm. I can't wait for those solid state drives to die off though because like that's what that's that's the trade-off. They don't last as long as the standard hard drives. Wait, they don't? No, they don't. Okay, they might see, be that's... making better ones that last longer, but... You see, because I know that, like, a lot of standard hard drives also have... Fit, uh, can die after a couple of years. Well, yeah, it, it, they, it, it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of how much you read and write off of them. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so the more you do that, the faster it is, the faster it, the faster it dies. Okay. Which is also why you don't want to obsessively defragment your computer, but, you know, that's getting into another topic. Mm, okay. Mm, that was a good meal. We're finally... <laughs> we're, it was. The Raccoon City Police Station is delicious. <laughs> we're finally done with the Raccoon City Police Station. But before we end the part, I just want to get one last item and drop it in my item box. Because since we are playing the B scenario, we can just access this weapons case right away. And it's like right down here. Might as well get it while we're here so that we don't have to lug this badge around all the time. Mm. Hey, what am I, a cop? <laughs> it's Gosh, not my Leon, badge. don't be such a narc. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Literally if you were a, a police cop, officer. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure if you were a cop, there would be trouble for, if you were to lug someone else's badge around. In any case, the um, the parts and pieces that we have here are the long barrel for the lightning hawk. I'm gonna. Uh, l they increase damage and stuff, which is nice makes it a really good weapon but it does kind of destroy that classic look that the that that that, that the uh well, I should take it back if you just go discard it huh yeah he, he takes it he takes it out of the slot and then just drops it on the ground <laughs> there <laughs> my job uh, my, my because, job is why should take the badge back it, if you're just going to because discard if you it. leave the key item in the slot it keeps the map it keeps that map space turned red it tells you that there's still an item there even though that item is just the key item that you used to get the only item in the room to yeah, be fair, that would annoy me too. 
Yeah, but yeah, but now Leon is a, a litterer. He's supposed to uphold the law. So, you know. It, yeah, it's the same reason. He, 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 he looks at his hands and just gives himself a slap on the wrist and then walks off. <laughs> now... Uh, combining the long barrel with the lightning hawk kind of destroys the look, but on the other hand, it's better. Okay, more powerful gun. <laughs> Ryan, also you're wider. you're talking about that. I'm imagining Leon taking the time to stop and write himself a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, I'm, I'm a bad man. He just walks it's just like he has to double park there. in order to get into the police station during the zombie outbreak, but he stops and he writes himself a parking ticket for doing it. <laughs> Unfortunately, the long barrel does turn it into a two slot weapon. So yeah, at this point you don't want to start. You don't want to be carrying your the magnum around casually just for emergencies anymore. You can take the long barrel. But you walk around with four guns. Yeah. You can take the long barrel <laughs> off to 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 shrink the weapon. And honestly, the basic damage output of a magnum is going to be enough for pretty much every regular zombie. You want the damage boosting upgrades specifically for bosses and for larger enemies like the liquors. 